Yo, what's up guys? Diesel here, back with some final gear. And today I wanna go over Calamus and Majera. Are they worth summoning? I don't know, let's find out. And before we get started with the video, I do wanna make a few quick announcements. At 2000 subs, I am gonna be doing a $20 giveaway. So do keep your eyes posted for that. Once we hit 2000 subs, I'll be doing a giveaway video. We'll keep it pretty simple. All you're gonna to need to do is, you know, do a comment with maybe a keyword and we'll pick a winner from that. And uh, we'll do either a gift card or if you want, I can log into your favorite game and spend $20 there, maybe on stream, something like that. Also, in regards to the giveaway, I do have a good vetting process to confirm the winner so please don't try to scam me as I do have a way of confirming the winner and you'll just be wasting your time also not cool if you try to take somebody's winnings away you know what I mean so if you do like these videos don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get those notifications also next week I'm gonna be streaming every Monday over at twitch so go follow me at twitch.tv slash gaming if you're interested in that I will eventually be streaming on Mondays and Thursdays and maybe one other day however for now I can only do Monday mornings and I will be posting my scheduled times so you know when I'm going to be streaming all right with all that out of the way let's get this video started okay so we have two new units here Calamus and Majera so let's go ahead and take a look at them and uh, see if they are worth your time starting with Calamus here she is a striker with raid weapon specialization, which means she's going to have 10% crit chance and she has the light part spec, which means she will get evasion, 10% evasion for that. Looking at Calamus's all-in-one mech data, the second effect is going to be 5% damage, the four effect will be 5% crit damage, and then the uh, activation effect will be uh, an extra evasion chance uh, of 10%. Another thing to note about Calamus is she does attack pretty quickly at almost four times a second. Let's go ahead and summarize what her skills do. Her high gear will do 1,663% damage and it will, this damage will increase by 1% for every one point of work pressure that she has. After she does her high gear, she will enter the workaholic state. This will increase her damage by 20% and then doubles the work pressure acquired and this lasts for 10 seconds. Her high gear costs 6,000 energy, so that's pretty good. It's not a very high cost energy. Calamus's entire kit revolves around getting work pressure, as we'll see going forward. Her skill 2 boosts evasion by 30% and accuracy by 15% evading will give her two work pressure but this can only proc once a second now keep in mind that if she evades after doing her high gear that two work pressure becomes four work pressure so we can see how this will kind of build up quite a quite a bit quicker and also how she is a very much a ramp up style unit her skill three boosts crit chance by 30 percent and crit damage by 15 percent standard attacks gain to work pressure also can only get once a second so every time she attacks with a standard attack every time she evades she's going to be getting work pressure every work pressure she gets is one percent extra damage so this just continues to stack and stack and stack after she does her high gear it clears the work pressure and she begins to build them up again and her skill four will increase her damage by two percent for every one point of work pressure now where it gets really crazy for calamus is her talent passive because every time her work pressure changes she will gain one two or five percent extra damage and this effect is permanent it will just keep stacking and stacking and stacking so yeah she is a very much a ramp up style unit and then her wedding vow gift will be an extra crit damage of 20 percent so overall calamus is a potential t0 damage unit her output will be very very high for this striker unit now this requires her to be in extended fights however in very short fights like like natural war or national war scenarios that will probably be scaled back down to a t1 
because this is a very much ramp up unit she really needs a little extra time to ramp up that damage get not only the work pressure stacks but every time her work pressure changes she's going to get those permanent damage stacks so it's going to take her like a minute in to really start seeing some crazy damage but beyond that point yeah she is definitely a t0 damage unit and will likely be outperforming your blade at that point she needs to constantly be building her work pressure her her work pressure constantly needs to be changing in order for her to get that ramp up fortunately she has some excellent sub stats she has a lot of crit chance on her sub stats so you can really focus on you know min maxing her very very easily and she even has some accuracy to help you out with that as well and overall her skill kit actually synergizes really really well with each other every skill that she has synergizes with one another and this makes her an excellent pick for a striker dps let's go over some pros and cons for calamus she attacks very very fast right she attacks twice as fast as blade in fact at four seconds uh four attacks per second she has a very high upper limit for damage output, right? So as she starts to ramp up her damage, her damage numbers are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the longer that she is inside of a fight, she will just keep getting crazy amounts of damage. However, things to keep in mind for Calamus is, if she's not in an extended fight her damage average will suffer she really needs time to ramp up that damage and get those work pressure going and get that work pressure changed that talent passive proccing so she really really needs to be in some sort of extended fight and the other thing about calamus that you have to keep into consideration is the striker slot is very competitive you have Strikers like Ren, who's gonna get a UR. Strikers like Tasia, who's gonna get a UR. Aya, who will be eventually getting a UR. And Aya's UR, I mean, I know it's a very far out, but it is going to be game changing when it comes out. You, then you have a free unit like Blade. And while you, while Blade might not be as strong as Calamus, she is nearly as strong. She is definitely a T0 type damage output unit as well. So keep in mind that this is a very competitive slot. And let's move on to Majera and take a look at her pilot properties. So Majera is a sniper and she's gonna get 10% attack and she will get again, uh, evasion for her light part specialization. Looking at her all in one data, we'll see that she has 5% mech damage, then she will get 5% critical strike chance, and then when she activates her mech, she will get further 10% extra crit damage. One thing to note is Majera attacks very, very slow. With a magazine capacity of six rounds, a reload time of 0.83 seconds, and an attack speed of 1.19 attacks per second. So she's not the fastest shooter in the world here. All right, so let's talk about Majera's skills. Her high gear will do 1,480% damage and will inflict EM dullness for 12 seconds with an energy cost of 6,000. So right away, we can see her high gear is pretty good. The EM dullness does not count as a debuff and that will be important going forward. Her skill number two will boost her crit chance by 25% and her accuracy by 20%. So what her skill three does is anytime she hits a, an enemy that has the EM dullness state on it, it will have an 80% chance to make Majera enter the pinpoint accuracy state. So entering the pinpoint accuracy state this will boost her damage by 30%, her crit damage by 15%, and it will also last eight seconds. It can be refreshed, but not stacked. And then her skill four, every 12 seconds, she will boost her damage by 30% for eight seconds. Doesn't stack, it can be refreshed, however. After every two standard attacks, her next attack will cause one of two things, or possibly both. Non-debuffed enemies have a 90% chance to deal and instantly deal 1.5 times damage. If she's attacking an enemy that is inflicted with the EM dullness state, she has a 90% chance to deal four times the damage. The very interesting thing about her skill kit here is because EM dullness doesn't count as a debuff on the enemy, both of these proc chances can happen simultaneously. So as you can see, she has a potential to do stupid amounts of damage because that 1.5x and that 4x can both proc at the same time. 
and her talent passive while she's in the pinpoint accuracy state normal attacks have a 50 70 or 90 percent chance to instantly deal 1.5 times extra damage and her wedding vow will give her 20 percent more crit damage so what are my thoughts on Majera? Majera is a strong sniper damage dealer. She fits firmly in the like T1 category, maybe next to Trita and her damage output. She has many different conditions that she has to juggle. Can, you know, she has to do the EM dullness and she has to do the pinpoint accuracy for her talent passive to proc and you know, all these things. And none of these states last long enough for her to capitalize. She doesn't have enough attack speed to capitalize in those small windows and those windows don't last longer. If those windows lasted longer, like if they were twice as long, Majera would be a force to be reckoned with. However, she has to settle for being a good damage dealer. You know, she's gonna do good damage. It's just gonna be kind of near the order of Trita. And while that might sound good for now, it's gonna feel very underwhelming in the future content and especially with the newer units that are, be gonna, that are gonna be coming around. So some quick pros and cons for Majera. The pros are there's not very many snipers, right? There's no real competing slot for a sniper unit. The only real competition she has right now is Trita. So if you are looking at the global units that we have available, Majera is a pretty good pickup if you're looking for a sniper style damage dealer. Because if you've missed Trita, well, you know, you have nobody else really. Uh, she is an Arita unit, which means when Morgan comes around, you can put her inside of Morgan's team and Morgan will get buffed from, uh, you know, Majera being around and you get Majera as an extra damage dealer. So she will pair well with Morgan. So that's a pro on Majera's part. And when everything lines up together, she has very, very high damage burst capability. All of those multipliers can converge and you can see some meme worthy crazy numbers. However, her overall damage output will feel kind of underwhelming in my opinion. So that leads me to her cons, right? The snipers coming out in the later parts of the future will far out class her. So even though it's not a very contentious spot, we're gonna be getting like uh, Lillian and uh, PN99, I think, are both snipers. So yeah, it, it's it's gonna be, <laughs> when they come out, you're kinda uh, you're really gonna have a need for Majera, I don't think. Her damage is inconsistent. Like I said, she doesn't have enough uptime on her pinpoint accuracy to proc her talent passive, and she definitely doesn't have enough you know, uptime on the EM dullness state to proc those 4X and 1.5X damage modifiers. And on top of that, she attacks very, very slowly. So on top of her windows being small, she can't even attack fast enough to, you know, capitalize on those damage windows. So yeah, it's it's very RNG based and overall her attack damage is not gonna be very consistent. But enough of that. Should you summon for Calamus or Majera? That's what you guys are wanting to know. Let's start with Calamus. Calamus is a very strong striker unit, right? She has T0 damage capabilities, uh, eclipsing that of even Blade. However, if you have a fully built Blade, I don't really see you gaining much progress by replacing Calamus with Blade, right? If you don't have Blade and you don't have have any good striker units i think she's a really good pickup but beyond that i don't think she's really needed and there's not really any incentive to get calamus to be honest there are so many other strikers that you can pick who will be better for you in the future so yeah i don't really see much of a reason to get her because even if you have blade yeah, she probably will outperform Blade, but if you replace Calamus, like a fully built Blade with Calamus, you're not gonna see much better clear times. You're not gonna all of a sudden get like a big boost in account progress because they're so similar in damage output. You might as well just farm out your Blade in my opinion. And moving on to Majera, she's, you know, an excellent sniper unit. Her only real competition right now is Trita. If you need a sniper damage unit and you miss Trita, she is a good pickup, but beyond that, Unless you just really like her skin, she's waifu, or you want to use her with Morgan or something in the future. I, again, I don't really see much incentive to pick up Majera. We're going to be getting some insanely strong sniper units in the future. So in my opinion, you, you're better off saving for those units because Majera's overall damage output, while 
it, it'll be crazy sometimes her her average output will feel very underwhelming in my opinion so yeah i don't really see much incentive on getting either unit while both of them are really good units to have they're not must pulls they're, they're you're not going to miss really any content or you're not really going to miss anything by not having them you know other than uh calamus's hilarious high gear animation <laughs> but uh yeah there's not much here guys you can safely skip these banners in my opinion but hey guys that's gonna be it for today if you enjoyed the video consider liking and subscribing to the channel for more information like this before also leave me a comment down below i would love to hear you guys' thoughts on calamus and majera did you summon for them how'd your summon session go let me know all that in the comments down below but yeah overall i like this whole event and the banners they all kind of feel a little underwhelming to me especially right after the ghost in the shell collab which is a good thing i guess it does give us a little bit of a breather right so yeah i, I guess either way i'm probably going to be skipping both of these units i really do love the way calamus's you know her custom mech looks i'm still tempted you know hashtag striker gang <laughs> But uh, I'm probably going to skip both of these units. So that's going to be it, guys. Have a great day. Be safe out there. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.